It's milk and biscuits time. Aladdin showed the African magician the house and carried the two pieces of gold to his mother, who went out and bought provisions. And, considering she wanted various utensils, borrowed them of her neighbors. She spent the whole day in preparing the supper, and at night, when it was ready, said to her son, "Perhaps the stranger knows not how to find our house. Go and bring him if you meet with him." Aladdin was just ready to go when the magician knocked at the door and came in loaded with wine and all sorts of fruits, which he brought for a dessert. After he had given what he brought into Aladdin's hands, he saluted his mother and desired her to show him the place where his brother Mustafa used to sit on the sofa. And when she had done so, he fell down and kissed it several times, crying out with tears in his eyes, "My poor brother, how unhappy am I!" Not to have come soon enough to give you one last embrace. Aladdin's mother desired him to sit down in the same place, but he declined. No, said he, I shall not do that. But give me leave to sit opposite to it, that although I see not the master of a family so dear to me, I may at least behold the place where he used to sit. When the magician had made choice of a place and sat down, he began to enter into discourse with Aladdin's mother. My good sister," said he, "do not be surprised at your never having seen me all the time. You have been married to my brother Mustafa of happy memory. I have been forty years absent from this country, which is my native place, as well as my late brother's, and during that time have travelled into the Indies, Persia, Arabia, Syria, and Egypt, and afterward crossed over into Africa, where I took up my abode. At last, as it is natural for a man. I was desirous to see my native country again, and to embrace my dear brother. And finding I had strength enough to undertake so long a journey, I made the necessary preparations and set out. Nothing ever afflicted me so much as hearing of my brother's death. But God be praised for all things. It is a comfort for me to find, as it were, my brother in a son who has his most remarkable features. The African magician, perceiving that the widow wept at the remembrance of her husband, changed the conversation, and turning toward her son, asked him, "What business do you follow? Are you of any trade?" At this question, the youth hung down his head and was not a little abashed when his mother answered, "Aladdin is an idle fellow. His father, when alive, strove all he could to teach him his trade, but could not succeed, and since his death." Notwithstanding all I can say to him, he does nothing but idle away his time in the streets, as you saw him, without considering he is no longer a child. And if you do not make him ashamed of it, I despair of his ever coming to any good. For my part, I am resolved one of these days to turn him out of doors and let him provide for himself. After these words, Aladdin's mother burst into tears, and the magician said, "This is not well, nephew." You must think of helping yourself and getting your livelihood. There are many sorts of trades. Perhaps you do not like your father's and would prefer another. I will endeavor to help you. If you have no mind to learn any handicraft, I will take a shop for you, furnish it with all sorts of fine stuffs and linens, and then with the money you make of them, you can lay in fresh goods and live in an honorable way. Tell me freely what you think of my proposal. You shall always find me ready to keep my word. This plan just suited Aladdin, who hated work. He told the magician he had a greater inclination to that business than to any other, and that he should be much obliged to him for his kindness. Well then, said the African magician, I will carry you with me tomorrow, clothe you as handsomely as the best merchants in the city, and afterward we will open a shop as I mentioned. The widow. After his promises of kindness to her son, no longer doubted that the magician was her husband's brother. She thanked him for his good intentions, and after having exhorted Aladdin to render himself worthy of his uncle's favor, served up supper, at which they talked of several indifferent matters. And then the magician took his leave and retired. He came again the next day, as he had promised, and took Aladdin with him to a merchant who sold all sorts of clothes for different ages and ranks ready-made. And a variety of fine stuffs, and bade Aladdin choose those he preferred, which he paid for.